fish is flattening out for at least the last 15, almost 20 years now, and this exponential increase in production of marine protein um, and, or, and organisms that is coming primarily from aquaculture. So we know this graph, we've seen it. Uh, there's an even more compelling figure which shows you where all of the production is coming from and where it's going, and there's these gigantic arrows pointing to the United States and very few arrows indicating production within the United States. <coughs> the idea is the United States is a massive consumer of, of aquatic proteins and a very minor producer of aquatic proteins, uh, especially in terms of aquaculture. And so we know this story. Um, you know, you call it a seafood deficit, whatever you want. It's even more striking in the state of California. Um, and so I don't think we have to spend much time really talking about the, the importance of aquaculture within the state. Um, you know, you that are here are either from the CSU as staff, um, faculty, or administrators, or you're here as a representative of the industry. Some of you are farmers. Some of you are producers, distributors, restaurant owners. I mean, you're, you kind of run the full gamut. Some of you are from NGOs. We have quite a few of you here that are representing organizations that are interested in all of this. Um, and some of you are from regulatory agencies. And we're very happy to have Fish and Wildlife here, NOAA's here, California Sea Grant. We've got a lot of groups that are, that are really interested in these ideas. And so this is, this is an excellent forum, I think, to talk about this stuff. So, okay, it's important to the state of California. California's not quite prepared if there is going to be a massive increase in aquaculture in the state. We don't, we're not gonna argue about whether there should be a massive increase. We don't know whether we can predict, predict if it's gonna happen tomorrow, if it's happening now, or if it's gonna take 20 years. That's not the point. The point is there is a perceived interest in the development of an aquaculture industry in the state of California. And as we know, relative to other states, we again are not quite prepared to do so in an organized fashion or in, in a way with the development so, what we'd like to present to you is some ideas for how the CSU can help to create a vibrant aquaculture industry and a strong, educated workforce within the state to promote the responsible development of both economically sustainable, environmentally sensitive, however you want to go about this industry, period. We see ourselves as a neutral party here. The CSU doesn't make fish, right? We don't build large offshore kelp farms, but we have an enormous amount of expertise that we think is going to be vital to that discussion and how it can be done. Yesterday, representatives from all 23 CSU campuses and the Chancellor's Office sat in this room and outlined a plan for potentially developing a center of aquaculture that would span the entire CSU. And when you look at that, this is an amazing, spread geographically. We have 23 campuses, as Jim was telling you, from Humboldt to San Diego, east to west. Uh, we, he talked about 450,000 students, tens of thousands of faculty with expertise all over. We have marine labs, we have specialized facilities, we have molecular facilities, we have entrepreneurship programs, we have watershed programs, we have water quality programs. I mean, it is an enormous, enormous resource to the state of California. And right now, it, it, it operates very individualistically within campuses and within departments and, and sometimes just amongst individual researchers working to get funding, working to develop partnerships, working to get their students jobs, um, and it works. It, it works, it's the way it's worked for you know, almost 100 years. To, um, you, you guys know about the ag colleges, you know about the cow colleges. Um, in the UC system, you also know about the ag colleges as well. So we know how this works. What doesn't happen is there is not an integrated plan for how these 23 campuses are going to work together to develop an industry in the state of California. And that's what we want to talk to you about today. Yesterday, this group of people agreed that, that we want to move forward in developing that plan. We want to move forward in looking at the potential for a center within the CSU. We're working on how to do that. There's a lot of stuff for us in the CSU to work out that um, is not very interesting to the rest of you because it's the way the organization is going to work is going to work, and there's going to be some things that can happen very fast, and there's going to be some things that are going to take many years, um, and, but it's a process, and the process basically started yesterday um, with overwhelming support from those 23 campuses, so we're very excited to introduce you to that. The thing for us is we're 
we're starting now and you're in this room, you're here at the ground level with us <coughs> as we're going to design what that center is going to do, right? So what we can tell you is that center will include coordination, research coordination, some type of a portal for you and us to query. We're going to be able to come into it and say, you know, I've got this program, I want to look at offshore production of mussels, but I need to understand which species I'm working with, I need to understand genetic structure. You enter it into the portal and you will then have access to the expertise of all those faculty members, research institutions. So you can set yourself up to look at who you might want to interact with. We know that it's going to happen. That's going to be good for all of us and we'll be able to coordinate amongst ourselves. You will know what instrumentation is available. You'll know what, what institutes are working on aspects. You'll know potentially what pending aspects are coming into it, what funding is coming through, who's had success in doing what, how close they are to you. This might be some, you might be working in, in um, uh, Tomales Bay and find out that the person you really want to be working with genetically is down in San Marcos, right? And, and so you wouldn't know that because at, you basically, like I, go to the next closest facility. But having a portal that shows you that coordinated network can be very useful. And we guarantee that, that that'll be one of the things we do. With that will be a bunch of student access. You'll have access to the students. A lot of you are very interested in having internships. Uh, you're very interested in getting children at the K-12 level involved. And you do it organically on your own, but it would be great to have a, a mechanism by which you can tap a larger resource to get you those interactions. We will also be having incentives. There will be incentives for faculty to work with you. There will be incentives for you to work with faculty. There will be incentives for all of us to write small grants, um, you know, it could be small business innovation research grants, which I know you're all familiar with, and we see coming out from NSF and NOAA and US, uh, USDA, Fish and Wildlife, these projects come up all the time, and sometimes we're prepared for them and sometimes we're not. We want to provide an infrastructure so that we can all be prepared to take advantage of these um, within the state, and I think it's gonna be useful for all of us. Helping with getting the permits available to do this work. A lot of times we wanna do scientific work, and we need to be able to get through the permitting process. That'll be another thing we hope to be able to help with. We want to be able to help with reporting. When studies are popping up without the C throughout the CSU, you hear about them when they come out in publication. If they're funded by Sea Grant, it'll come out in the Sea Grant report. But they don't come out in, a, in a, a uniform fashion where you get releases. This had just come. These are the researchers involved. These are the institutions involved. These are the companies that we're working with them. That'd be another way for this center to help you help galvanize what's going on so that you can understand it. And also dissemination and research. Like I said, we, we're a neutral party here, right? We are a great, we are a great venue for you to come and have discussions. Industry, agencies, academia, NGOs, you want to talk about permitting, we can be a venue to have those discussions. If you want to talk about offshore farming, we can be a venue to have the the, the discussion of whether, you know, what are the academic aspects of it? What are the legal aspects of it? What are the industrial issues that we'd like to see evolve? Um, we see ourselves as being potentially, we would like to be a, almost a one-stop shop where you can come into this system with any issue related that you think academia can help you with. And I think a lot of us think of academia as just you go off into the room, the professors are hanging out, they're with their students, and you have to figure out a way to get into it. And that's not really what academia is about. Academia now has moved to having a much stronger appreciation from the public for what we do. Outreach is much more important than what we do. Demonstrating to the public what our impact is, and I think that's more of what we're looking at now. There are so many people in this room and within the CSU that are trying to work in grade schools and in high schools and you know, with, with backyard gardening clubs just to get that information out. That's also what academia is. So that's what we would like to be. Um, we are not currently there yet because we are just 